As you can probably tell, we are in the middle of hurricane season here in the United States. And last week, Hurricane Ian, a Category 4 storm, hit the west coast of Florida incredibly hard. As of recording this video, the death toll and the total cost of damage, all of that is still being analyzed and probably will be for a few weeks to come. I've been talking a lot about tornadoes on this channel, but I want to start talking about hurricanes as well. They are the most powerful and most destructive storms on Earth. Earth. So today, before we do any sort of meteorological breakdowns, I want to recap the worst hurricanes to hit every Atlantic coastal state in the US. I will not be including places like Puerto Rico or Cuba because they deserve and will get their own separate videos. This will be a very quick historical view on each hurricane as I plan to dive deeper on the meteorology behind them at a much later date. Now, some of these hurricanes hit multiple states, but I will be only focusing on one state at a time. With all that being said, the worst hurricane to ever hit Maine was Hurricane Edna in 1954. Now, hurricanes feed off of warm water, and thus it's pretty difficult to keep a hurricane happy and healthy as it drifts northward into colder waters. But this happened twice in 1954, the second time being Hurricane Edna. What had started as a tropical depression east of the Caribbean Sea on September 2nd had continued up the coast as a category three hurricane, causing extensive flooding in Puerto Rico and 70 mile an hour wind gusts on the eastern shores of the Carolinas. On September 11th, it struck Maine as a category one hurricane with wind gusts of 75 miles an hour. Seven and a half inches of rain across the state of Maine caused major flooding in the Androscoggin and Kennebec River Valleys. The floodwaters washed out bridges, railroads, and highways, making it impossible to reach the rest of New England. About a fifth of the state's residents were without power and eight people drowned. In total, the storm caused $25 million in damage in Maine alone. Now the next coastal state is New Hampshire, but would you believe it, the worst hurricane to hit New Hampshire is also shared as the worst for Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New York. It's the devastating 1938 New England hurricane. What would be the most destructive hurricane to ever hit New York City actually went unnoticed for the first week of its existence as a tropical disturbance off the coast of Africa, purely due to the lack of technology at the time. It was finally detected as a full-fledged hurricane on the 17th by a Brazilian ship. And on the afternoon of the 21st, it made landfall on Long Island as a Category 3 hurricane with 120 mile per hour maximum sustained winds. The damage on Long Island was catastrophic. Thousands of cottages were destroyed with $6.2 million of damage occurring to the Hamptons alone. Many new inlets were formed from the resulting storm surge. In Connecticut, New Haven took the brunt of the damage, receiving 115 mile an hour sustained winds. Hundreds more were killed by the resulting storm surge. Water was funneled into Narragansett Bay, causing a 20 foot storm surge in Providence and 18 to 25 feet of water around Cape Cod. The hurricane force winds accelerated up to the summit of Mount Washington in New Hampshire, registering as 163 mile an hour gusts. In New England, between 700 and 800 people were killed and nearly 9,000 buildings were completely destroyed. It was a once in a century type storm. You probably expected this particular hurricane to make the list and wouldn't you know it, Hurricane Sandy in 2012 is the worst hurricane to ever strike New Jersey. Now, if you're from New Jersey, you might be confused as to why the Great Atlantic Hurricane of 1944 did not make the list. While it did produce a lot of damage, it didn't actually make landfall. It just skirted up the Atlantic coast and the damage from Sandy was actually a lot greater. Now there is one technicality here. By the time Hurricane Sandy hit New Jersey, it was classified as a post-tropical cyclone, meaning that it didn't contain a lot of the characteristics you would expect in a tropical cyclone, AKA a hurricane. But it was such a historic storm, and it was at one point a hurricane, that I'm going to include it on this list. You can feel free to disagree. After all, the 70 mile an hour gust and associated storm surge washed away a piece of the Atlantic City boardwalk, as well as flooded and destroyed many homes along the coast. The wind also knocked out power to 2.6 million people in the state. The storm resulted in 43 deaths statewide and $47 billion in damage. The worst hurricane to hit Delaware is a pretty tricky one to figure out. One likely hit on September 2nd, 1985, sinking the Irish ship, the Faithful Steward, resulting in 181 deaths. However, due to the lack of records, human accounts, and just general meteorology knowledge at the time, 
We don't have a lot of information. The other worst hurricane is likely the hurricane of October 1878. Originally making landfall near Cape Lookout, North Carolina as a Category 2 storm, it traveled due north and hit the state of Delaware very hard. Hurricane force gusts hit the city of Dover in the early morning hours of the 24th, and along the bay shores, a storm surge of 10 feet swept through the marsh. Great damage from the surge was reported in Middletown, Port Penn, and Delaware City. South Wilmington suffered the worst damage, with many homes being submerged to the second floor by 10 a.m. Damage estimates were likely around $10 million at the time, which is near $200 million today. Around 100 deaths were attributed to the storm. Unfortunately, there's little physical evidence I could show you of this hurricane, but if it were to occur today, much of downtown Wilmington would be underwater. Maryland is kind of in no man's land. It was heavily affected by the 1878 hurricane, as well as the remnants of Hurricane Agnes in 1972. But the low that was once Hurricane Agnes had weakened significantly, so technically it was just a tropical storm that dumped so much rain that 19 people were killed through flooding. Furthermore, it's difficult to separate the data from Maryland and DC, and then likewise Virginia. The most damaging storm, however, is undeniably Irene in August of 2011, causing $151 million in damages, primarily from flooding. Virginia is much the same. Being about 400 miles long, it can be affected by hurricanes that ride northward up the Atlantic coast, such as the Great Atlantic Hurricane of 1944. Cape Henry received 134 mile an hour wind gusts, destroying any crops that were remotely close to the coast. However, hurricanes that form in the Gulf that track inland can also dump a ton of rain on western Virginia as tropical storms, and due to the mountainous terrain and general poverty of the area, the effects can be just as devastating. Hurricane Camille in 1969 hit Mississippi with tremendous strength, veered to the east, and dumped 27 inches of rain in Nelson County, Virginia as a tropical storm, killing 116 and causing $115 million in damage. Flash flooding in the mountains is deadly. The worst hurricane to hit North Carolina was undoubtedly Hazel in 1954. Hazel slammed into the North and South Carolina border on October 15th as a Category 4 storm, with the strongest winds funneling into the shore of Oak Island in Wilmington, gusting to 150 miles an hour. Unfortunately, the storm surge was enhanced by a particularly high lunar tide, causing the water to rise about 18 feet. 15,000 homes totaling $163 million along the coast of North Carolina were destroyed and 19 people were killed, which is remarkably low for this kind of damage. As for South Carolina, that title belongs to Hurricane Hugo of 1989. At midnight on September 22nd, the Category 4 storm made landfall near Sullivan's Island, with wind gusts nearing 140 miles an hour. In McClellanville, the storm surge reached a height of 20.2 feet, making it the highest storm surge ever on the U.S. East Coast. Boats were carried half a mile inland, crashing into buildings. 95% of urban trees in Charleston were uprooted, and over 3,000 buildings were heavily damaged. In total, it caused $5.9 billion in property damage and directly took 13 lives. The worst hurricane to hit Georgia was the Georgia Hurricane of 1898, hence the name. On October 2nd, the hurricane made landfall on Cumberland Island, producing winds of 135 miles an hour, and producing a storm surge of 16 feet in Brunswick and Darien, where 32 people unfortunately lost their lives. The storm killed 179 people along the coast and caused $1 million in damages. And while Georgia rarely takes a direct hit from a hurricane due to its small shoreline, Florida is like the big brother that protects Georgia from the bully, Mother Nature. In this case for Florida, you can take your pick between the costliest, the strongest wind, the deadliest, the largest, etc. The deadliest hurricane to hit Florida is the Lake Okeechobee hurricane of 1928. The storm made landfall on West Palm Beach on September 17th with sustained winds of 145 miles an hour, destroying around 1,700 homes along the coast. But the worst damage occurred in the town surrounding Lake Okeechobee, including Bell Glade and Canal Point. The storm surge caused the lake to overflow and covered the small towns with 20 feet of water. Over 2,500 people drowned as a result. The most destructive hurricane to ever hit Florida is still Hurricane Andrew in 1992. Affecting mainly the southern tip of Florida, the storm surge wasn't the main issue here. It was the devastating straight-line winds. 
Between Kendall and Key Largo in Dade County, nearly 100,000 homes were damaged and 60,000 were destroyed, many of these being mobile homes. Winds in this area were sustained at around 130 miles an hour. The catastrophic damage rendered 175,000 residents homeless. Finally, the costliest hurricane in Florida was Irma in 2017. The storm had a very large wind field that greatly impacted Naples and the Florida Keys. Big Pine Key in particular received the worst of the damage, with 1,300 homes receiving some sort of significant damage. Monroe County as a whole lost between 3 and 4,000 homes. The total cost of damage was $52.1 billion. The worst hurricane to hit Alabama was Hurricane Frederick in 1979. On the night of September 12th, the massive eyewall of the Category 4 storm slammed into Dauphin Island, with winds between 100 and 145 miles an hour impacting the city of Mobile. Most of the buildings in the city suffered heavy damage, and most of the houses along the coast crumbled from the high winds before the storm surge could have any effect. The road bridge leading out to Dauphin Island was also destroyed. While Alabama and Mississippi are coastal neighbors, the worst hurricane to hit Mississippi is Hurricane Camille in 1969. Two days before dropping all of that rain in Virginia, Camille made landfall on the Mississippi Gulf Coast as the second most intense hurricane to ever hit the U.S. With a pressure reading of only 900 millibars and wind speeds of 175 miles an hour, a resulting 24.6 foot storm surge engulfed past Christian and surrounding towns. The actual wind speeds aren't available because the hurricane actually destroyed the physical instruments themselves. The wind destroyed 20,000 acres of crops, including corn, and flooded an additional 840,000 acres of land. The storm surge actually caused the Mississippi River to flow backwards about 120 miles upstream. Unfortunately, Louisiana is another take-your-pick state. Hurricanes Ida, Laura, and the last island hurricane of 1856 are all tied for having the greatest wind speed at landfall of 150 miles per hour. But the damage caused by Category 3 Hurricane Katrina in 2005 is just unmatched. Katrina broke the levees around the city of New Orleans that kept the ocean water out since much of the area is actually below sea level. The catastrophic flooding resulted in 1,800 deaths and $125 billion in damage. Truly a worst case scenario for what wasn't even the strongest hurricane to hit Louisiana. And finally, Everything is bigger in Texas, and such is the case for the Great Galveston Hurricane of 1900. This Category 4 hurricane is actually the deadliest natural disaster in all of United States history. The system that would be the hurricane traveled west-northwest through the Gulf of Mexico, hitting Cuba as a tropical storm. Several ships reported the existence of the storm, which was actually the main method of hurricane detection in the early 1900s. As it slowly moved westward, it gained in intensity, strengthening to a Category 4 with winds in excess of 145 miles an hour. On September 8th, it made landfall to the south of Houston, and the damage was unbelievable. At the time, Galveston was a relatively rich city on a small island with about 38,000 people. It had dealt with hurricanes in the past, albeit none of them major, but the local government maintained a blissful ignorance that a major hurricane would never strike the city. Thus, even after a local outcry for a protective seawall to be built nearly a decade earlier, Galveston had done virtually nothing as a city to protect itself from the inevitable. The high point of the city was a mere 8.7 feet above sea level, and the result was catastrophic. While the highest recorded wind speed was 100 miles an hour, much like Camille, the anemometers used to measure the wind were destroyed shortly after the hurricane hit. The winds were almost certainly over 120 miles an hour, giving the hurricane a Category 4 rating. Much of the city was covered in 8 feet of water by a powerful storm surge, added to by an additional 9 inches of rain. The vast majority of homes in Galveston suffered damage, every single street was flooded, and 3,600 homes were completely destroyed. Of the 38,000 residents, about 8,000 had died from the storm surge. It was one of, if not the biggest weather wake-up calls in the history of the United States, and the deadliest natural disaster. In the next few months, I will be diving deeper into the meteorology behind a few significant hurricanes. If that's something you'd like to see, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the upload. And of course, several links to donate to Hurricane Ian relief funds will be in the description below. I'll see you guys soon.